Today we're heading to Halloween Island. It's an island of one, and it's that film right there. Let's get into it. my channel hope you're all doing well out there today we're going to head to the island of halloween before we take that trip like comment subscribe join me here we would appreciate that we are on to our next halloween franchise timeline video and this is a movie of one this is the bastard stepchild the misfit of the halloween franchise and that movie is that one right there halloween 3 season of the witch now, like I said in my first timeline video, after the success of the original Halloween, John Carpenter did not see any movies past that first film. He got approached about doing a sequel, and that became 1981's Halloween 2. Now, he wrote and produced that film and scored it with Alan Howarth, and then he also did some pickup shots, although I said my theory on that one. So that movie was pretty damn successful, not as successful as the first film, but it was pretty well received by the fans, and it made a nice profit at the box office. So they wanted to do another sequel. The producers, Mustafa Akkad and all that, wanted to do another film. Carpenter and Hill had no interest. They thought, we killed Michael Myers. We blew the shit out of him. So there's no more Michael Myers. He's dead. So John and Deborah decided, what if we did a Halloween movie each year? It could be just a Halloween-themed movie. It can go in any direction it wants to go. The filmmaker that comes in wants to go and writers. So... They hired a writer, and they came up with the script for that film right there. Now, John Carpenter had no interest in directing. He said he would produce it and score it. So they went out to a friend who worked with John Carpenter on Halloween 1 and The Fog, and that is none other than Tommy Lee Wallace, who would go on to direct the 1990 version of TV's It, and a pretty damn good sequel in Fright Night 2. If you've never seen the original Fright Night 2, check it out, because it is a pretty kick-ass sequel. It does not get enough credit. And uh, so they went off and made this film. I think they had like a two and a half or three million dollar budget to go make this weird little Halloween film. Now, they did work on the script a little bit. They brought a horror writer from England in, Nigel Neal. His basic idea is still the idea that ends up in this film. But Carpenter took a pass at it and then Tommy Lee Wallace did some rewriting on it. And they went off in California and they wrote or they shot this little film. And they hired the great Tom Atkins, Stacey Nelkin, Daniel Hurley and whatnot. And... When it got released that year, it wasn't very well received. And I talked about this before because I reviewed it last Halloween. You can check that video out. Go to Halloween Movies um, playlist. You'll find that review. If you've ever seen the trailer for Halloween 3, it's very ambiguous if Michael Myers is in it. And I already said to, told the story about how I didn't know there was a Halloween 3 because when I was a kid back then, there was no internet. And you basically knew what was on TV by TV Guide. Unless you read Fangoria or you've seen something in the paper, you happen to see a trailer late at night, because that's the only time they really showed horror movie trailers, you didn't know if there was a sequel. And I remember on a TV Guide, there's a Halloween 3. I'm like, holy shit, I get to see what's going on with Michael Myers. And I watched it, and I'm like, uh, what the hell is this? So, again, I'm in the boat, too. I hated this movie for years. It took me a while. It was probably until the mid to late 90s when I really started to appreciate it. Now I love this film. But... The genesis of this film, and I think it was still a pretty cool idea by Carpenter and Hill, was to go off every year and do a Halloween-themed film that can go on any direction it wanted to. And this was a pretty cool start-off point, now that I appreciate this film for what it is. It's a pretty kick-ass little horror flick that's weird, it's bizarre, has the great Tom Atkins playing an awful father and husband, but we still love him, and an awful doctor, but he's still awesome in this film. The lovely Stacey Duncan and Daniel Hurley chewing the shit out of the scenery in all the kind of uh, inglorious ways. And, you know, you got a really cool little film. And I, I know a lot of other people have said this, and I believe this too. If they would have called it Season of the Witch instead of Halloween 3, it probably would have did much better. But sadly, it didn't. I think it made a little over $14 million. So it didn't make some money compared to the budget, but it wasn't a huge hit. It wasn't well received. That's why they went off in 88 and brought Michael Myers back from the dead in Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, which we'll get to in the next video. But this on its own, and that's why I said it's like a Halloween Island, it's off on its own little thing bastard stepchild of the Halloween franchise is a pretty cool little flick. I mean, you got that badass mask with the other two masks in the film. You got this evil plan by this mask maker and he wants to bring witchcraft back to the forefront like his ancestors used to do way back in Ireland when they, they uh, worshiped Sam Hain and all that stuff and they would make human sacrifices and his sacrifice while playing a joke on the children is to sacrifice all the children which is a pretty damn evil plan 
Plus that ending with Tom Atkins screaming on the phone to the, t the last t TV network to shut off the commercial and he just looks right in the camera and screams one last time. A perfect ending. A dark ending, although if you want to remain hopeful, maybe they did shut it off, but I say it's probably a dark ending. He probably didn't get shut off and probably a lot of kids probably did die, but it's a great ending. Uh, it's definitely in line with what Carpenter liked to do with those dark dour endings with the thing and all that, but Tommy... Um, Dean Cunney came in to shoot the film. It's a really nice looking film. They shot in uh, this little town in California and they shot that in a real factory. This Damas factory was a factory that was in the town and they just retrofitted it to meet their needs to film it. This is always, this is like the little offshoot of the Halloween franchise, this own little thing out there with, that bears the name. And I can see why people were frustrated back in the 80s. There's no Michael Myers, you don't even hear it. I mean, they reference Halloween they see it on TV and all that stuff. But you don't, there's no mention of Michael Myers, there's no, you know, Laurie Strode, no Sam Loomis, none of that. Yeah, it's just this contained little Halloween story that's pretty kick-ass on its own. And it's just a shame. I'm glad it's getting more recognized now. It took a while to get here. But the film does get recognized more now and more people like it. I'm not saying it's a love fest, but more people do appreciate it for the twisted little tale that it is. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting considering the whole franchise this is definitely an interesting entry in that franchise and it was a cool idea by carpenter and hill to try to do these you know anthology films each year that they could do pretty fairly cheaply and they can give the filmmaker total creative control to go off and try something different as long as it's halloween themed it's a pretty damn cool idea i wish it actually revisit that i actually wouldn't mind to do a sequel to that but i don't think we'll ever see that because a way it just was handled and the way it was received back in 82 when it was released but yeah it's fun to talk about this film now. It's a cool little Halloween flick. They definitely steep it in the season, but it's definitely its own thing. It has nothing to do with the rest of the Halloween timeline. Again, it's like its own little island out here by itself. Um, wanting to be accepted by everybody, but it took some time for some people to get there. But yeah, this is a cool little flick. If you've never seen it, or if you haven't seen it in a while, don't remember liking, give it another shot. You might feel differently now. I think it holds up pretty well. There's some cool gnarly effects in it. Tom Atkins kicks ass. Him and Stacey Nelkin are great together. And Daniel Hurley is, gives a great performance as the as this evil mask maker that wants to just have this big human sacrifice and kill a bunch of kids. It's a pretty cool, weird little flick. And I highly recommend if you haven't seen it in a while. And it's definitely something to watch that's a little different than the rest of the Halloween franchise. So yeah. That completes this part of the Halloween franchise recap with the timelines. Next up, we'll have Halloween 4, 5, and 6, which is known as the Thorn Trilogy. And we'll get into that. Um, those three films I like to varying degrees, and we'll talk about it. But I hope you're all doing well out there. I'll be back soon with another video. But until then, bye.